In other videos, we've introduced the equations to calculate the geothermal gradient using the equation for the conductive geotherm, which is shown up here. This is one example of it. And then the convective geotherm, which are really these three equations right here. And we're going to set this up in Excel so we can graph these geotherms. Just for the sake of example, we're going to let the conductive lithosphere vary from 0 to 105 kilometers. And then below that thermal lithosphere, we'll have the convective mantle. Uh, that'll go from 105 kilometers to, well, for our example, 300 kilometers. Let's calculate the temperature here. First, let's take a note of units. I've entered the kilometers in the depth in units of kilometers here and then converted it to meters. Uh, so that way we can have all of our uh, thermometric uh, values up here in units of watts per meters. So for uh, the sake of units, we're going to take all these fellows that are in gray. So for TZ, temperature at some depth, it'll be TZ naught, which is this fellow here, plus the heat flow. We don't want the heat flow in milliwatts. We want it in, in watts per square meter. Uh, that'll be multiplied by the depth and multiplied by the thermal conductivity. We'll just hit return. We're not done yet. Uh, but we're just going to hit return to check, and we do recover that T naught when Z is equal to zero. So far, so good. Then we're going to subtract from this, this A over 2KZ squared term. So here's our thermal productivity. Again, we don't want it in microwatts. We're going to grab the one that is in gray, uh, and then we are going to multiply that times Z to the second power, and we'll be divided by two. That's the two factorial in the Taylor series. Uh, multiplied by the thermal conductivity. And again, we hit return. Turns out we get 30, which is good. If we fill down, we get a bunch of nonsense. Uh, if we look at this initial cell, we should be uh, taking these constant values here. And if we just fill down without putting any dollar signs, we get, a, we get the wrong cell references. So all of our constants are in column E. So everywhere where I have a column E, I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the row for the cell reference. And then when we hit fill down, those should be constant, and they are. Now over here at 105 kilometers, we, we are going to use a different equation for the geothermal gradient. We're going to use this fellow here, which makes use of this geothermal gradient dt dp, which we've converted to dt dz for depth as we illustrate again in another video. So here, we're going to enter this equation, TZ naught. But what's our TZ naught? It's not really the temperature at the surface. It's the temperature at the base of the thermal lithosphere here. And then we're going to add to that dt dz, which I've converted from dt dp values over here. And that'll be multiplied. In this case, take a look at the dt dz. It's in relative to, relative to kilometers. So we're not going to use the meter values here. We're going to use the kilometer values here for our references. So this is the uh, depth of interest, Z, and then minus Z naught. Our reference depth will be this fellow here. And again, we're, we want that reference depth to be fixed. We want that reference temperature in G20 to be fixed. And then we want this value in E10, the G the uh, thermal gradient to be fixed. We'll put dollar signs in front of those, hit return, and then fill down. And now we have our convective geotherm down here. Uh, if we're going to make a plot, I like to have depth on the vertical axis increasing downwards. I'm just going to make a copy of this row. That's all column H is. All I've done is copy this row here. And the reason I do that is because when we make a plot in Excel, uh, if I grab two columns, X will always be on the right, uh, the left, and Y on the right. It's always X versus Y the way they set it up, with Y being vertical. So when I uh, select these two rows and hit Insert and then X, Y, Scatter, uh, by putting the, uh, the values for temperature on the left of the depths, then I get these depths in the uh, vertical column where I want them. I want the values in reverse order so I can get a nat natural cross-sectional view. And I don't want dots. Dots make it look like data. These are not data. So I'm going to bounce around until I find the right, um, uh, the right uh, options that I want here. Then we'll probably have to click on the dots. That's probably what we're doing wrong. wrong. There we go. We find marker and marker options. We want no marker and the line. We can just have a solid line. 
And there we go. There's our geothermal gradient that we've just plotted. And we can uh, get rid of the title. We already know what it is. We can add some chart elements so we remind ourselves what the axes are. So this is uh, the temperature in centigrade, and then this is depth in kilometers. And then that is not so easy to read in the very small font, so we can increase that a little bit so it makes it a little bit easier for us to follow. So there's our geothermal gradient. Now what we could do is we can also compare it to a solidus. I've put the Hirschman et al. mantle solidus here. Now that solidus is given in units of GPA, so we can have a new column where we calculate GPA, not grade point average, but uh, pressure in gigapascals. Excel probably refuses to write pascals. No, it doesn't. So uh, for uh, converting depth to gigapascals, well, we have about three kilometers uh, per um, kilobar and then 10 kilobars per gigapascal. So we could do divided by three. We could take kilometers divided by three, divided by 10 again, and we get GPA. Uh, I'm just going to take this whole thing and then move it over. Well, I guess we don't need to move it. We'll just calculate the temperature of the solidus, and that will be using this equation. So it equals 5.14 times uh, GPA squared plus 132.9 times, times the pressure in gigapascals plus a constant of 11. 20.7. So there's our solidus. Uh, let's make, there's probably an easier way to do this, but I'm going to make yet another column of depth and then we will plot the solidus. We'll just copy those cells, select the chart, and then edit paste special. Uh, we have a new series. The categories are in the X values and there is our solidus. So the way we've set this up here, the geotherm is everywhere below the solidus. We could play some games. We can say, well, what if the heat flow is, let's say, 80 milliwatts per um, square meters instead of 60, then the geotherm would be hot enough. Anyway, these are games that you could play around uh, if you want to uh, try uh, plotting your own uh, curves for the solidus and the convective and conductive geotherms.